Well, now fresh off the news of Bill O'Reilly's staggering $32 million settlement to Fox legal analyst Liz Wheel settling a sexual harassment claim, which O'Reilly's attorney says is false. Well, Bill has taken to his Spin News podcast to blame not himself, but a higher power for his troubles. You know, am I mad at God? Yeah, I'm mad at him. I wish I had more protection. I wish this stuff didn't happen. I can't explain it to you. Uh, yeah, I'm mad at him. If I die tomorrow and, and I get an opportunity, I'll say, why'd you guys work me over like that? Didn't you know my children were going to be punished and they're innocent? Psychologist Dr. Robbie Ludwig, who has not treated O'Reilly, watched and analyzed his God comment. It's clear that Bill O'Reilly right now is feeling like a victim and from his statement is not taking any responsibility for the role he played in what happened. It certainly is a problem if you go through life and you don't accept responsibility for some of the problems that come your way. And it could be indicative of a kind of character pathology that doesn't work to a person's advantage. Another new Harvey Weinstein accuser has come forward, Mimi Halle, and today at a press conference in New York with her attorney Gloria Allred, an emotional Mimi claimed Weinstein orally forced himself on her in 2006 in a way too graphic for us to air. I remember Harvey afterwards rolling over onto his back saying, don't you feel we're so much closer to each other now? To which I replied, no. No woman should have to be subjected to this type of unacceptable abuse. Women have the right to say no. And no is a no, regardless of the circumstances. And I told Harvey no. The question was, has Mimi gone to the police yet? And the answer is no. The next question was, does she plan to go? That's something we will discuss. And Weinstein continues to deny any allegations of non-consensual sex. Turning now to director James Toback, since the initial 38 women came out two days ago in a Los Angeles Times story accusing him of sexual harassment, now 200 more women have come forward with similar stories. Including Julianne Moore, who claims Toback approached her twice in the 80s, both times trying to get her to audition at his apartment. And I also spoke to another accuser, Elizabeth Crane, who claims her story began when the director invited her to the Harvard Club in New York for lunch. At the time she was 23, Toback was 39. When you go to the lunch with him, what happened during that conversation? He, you know, he started a conversation that seemed sort of harmless enough. He told me a little bit about the project that he was interested in me for, which was the pickup artist. And then he took a phone call. During this conversation, which was lengthy, it, it just went very sexual, very quickly, a lot of masturbation talk. He, so he hung up the phone and asked me, so how, did you hear what I was saying? And how did you feel about that? So I was just like, I'm not gonna sleep with you. I'm not interested. And if that's what you need from me, sorry. Oh, no, 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 that's cool, you know, but are you shocked by anything you heard? Oh, it's so grace, it makes your skin crawl. By the way, Toback has continued to deny all claims. Well, I can completely relate to Elizabeth and Julianne's stories because it happened to me, too. I happened to be in my mid-20s. When James Toback approached me, he had the very same playbook, even had magazines to prove who he was, saying he was this famous filmmaker, and he made it very clear to me that if I wanted any part in his movies or an, even as an extra, that I'd have to be willing to take risks, and I knew exactly what he meant. He got pretty graphic. Needless to say, I got out of there as fast as I could. I am so glad that you escaped that predator. I was one of the lucky ones, though. Right.